So what is the what is the solution to this? So if you have uh, tens of thousands of raging white people <laughs> attempting to storm a capital, and you're approaching it from a, a I guess an abolitionist or a defund the police perspective, how would you how would you what would be like the bigger question that you would maybe want to ask people or pe- have people think about in regards to this event? Well, certainly we want to resist this idea that's coming out of the Biden administration that we need like more domestic terrorism laws, Mm -hmm. that we need to further strengthen political policing. Mm. So we certainly don't want to do that because we know, we know that in the long run, those new powers are going to be used against the left, Mm -hmm. not against the right. You know, there'll be some some symbolic rounding up of a few, you know, wingnut extremists. And then very quickly, those resources will pivot to going after, you know, black identity extremists and Antifa and all these code words for, you know, what is this emerging left movement in the United States? So, so that's, that's the first thing. We don't want to fall down that. uh, We don't want to make that mistake which a lot of liberals have fallen into, right? That Mm -hmm. they're embracing their retributive impulses of, you know, justice equals punishment. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think though, ultimately, this is about establishing, you know, an aspirational left politics that speaks to the alienation that is such fertile ground for these extremist right-wing movements. Mm who see nothing in the mainstream Democratic Party to appeal to them. And we know, for instance, that some folks on the, on the margins of these extremist movements um, were quite sympathetic to, for instance, Bernie Sanders. Mm. Yeah. That they would not have e- as easily fallen into all of these conspiracy theories and militant resistance if Bernie had been the nominee. Right. Because there was a sense in which he actually gave a shit about middle America and working people yeah. and was trying to figure something out and was going to like and was not part of the centrist liberal permanent state establishment that he was an outsider, you know, with independent credibility. Mm-hmm. Now, there are various reasons why Bernie was not able to to pull that off. Uh, and it's not clear, you know, who's immediately in the wings. But I think that that rather than focusing all our energy on picking the next presidential candidate, we need to be building the grassroots movements that will change the politics on the ground that will create the possibility of someone stepping into that mm. at some future date, whether it's AOC or some other member of the squad or someone, you know, coming out of these mu- movements. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, what are like some of the next steps in um, defunding the police or or police abolition? I mean, what are some like, because I think what people need is a demonstration because they're so scared of the idea because they just haven't ever lived without police. They don't know what it's like. They think crime's going to skyrocket. You know, who's going to deal with these violent rioting protesters, whatever. Like, I mean, there's all of these scenarios that people will bring up when you say like, yeah, I think we should really move towards defunding and abolishing the police as we understand it to be. Um, And it's, it's kind of hard because you do need to have a demonstration. You need to like show people like actually what works and how we can get there. And so, I mean, yeah, like in your work, I mean, what have you observed as far as moving towards that? Like what are some examples that we could point people towards as far as like how that would work? Yeah, I think a lot of people see the movement only in terms of, you know, well, when was the last big street protest? And then if we don't see a street protest, well, then the movement must have collapsed. But this is far from true. I mean, I'm doing events every day across the country in cities where people are organizing. They're not necessarily doing daily protests, but they're organizing. Mm -hmm. They're in the communities talking to people about what we could do instead of policing to make these communities safer than they are right now. Because that's really what the movement is calling for. Mm -hmm. It's not about punishing the police by taking their budgets away. It's about, we need things in the communities to produce safety and all the money goes to policing and policing is part of the problem. Mm -hmm. 
So, uh, you know, I was in Asheville, North Carolina this week, where for, for years, folks called for things like implicit bias training and body cameras. Mm. And folks have come to realize there that these things didn't help. And that instead, they want to talk about getting police out of the schools, mm. creating alternative mental health responses so that police aren't involved. Mm. creating community-based anti-violence programs. And that's what this movement looks like on the ground. It's people in the community talking to each other about what these alternative systems of public safety would look like. Not tomorrow we're going to flip some magical switch that doesn't exist and poof, there are no police, and then we'll figure it out. No, we have this massive infrastructure of policing and we're going to start chipping away at it mm. in a very methodical kind of way. Let's hire counselors, create restorative justice programs, and get rid of school police. Let's create community-based mental health services and, and clinical emergency response teams and get the police out of that. Mm. Right? Let's, let's quit using police to manage homelessness and drugs. Let's turn these into housing and public health problems mm. to be resolved by people who know how to manage those problems, right? Let's mobilize community resources instead of thinking the police can solve every problem. And I, I'm telling you this, this uh, coming year, when we go into the local budget season, we're just going to see hundreds of these movements across the country of, of communities saying, no, we don't want to hire more police. We, we want to hire more community workers and mm -hmm. clinical workers and, and, I think this is we're going to see some big victories. That's good. So, so I guess in this uh, this movement to defund police and reallocate resources, that's very much a grassroots thing, versus say a overarching like national. I mean, it's a national project, I guess, but it doesn't require like a massive form of legislation to make it happen. It can be done on a like a city or state or just on a local level, right? One of the yeah, one of the challenges right now is that. Everyone has been so obsessed with Trump that that everyone thinks politics is something you do every four years in relationship to the presidential election. And if you're really political, it's every two years when there are congressional elections. Mm -hmm. But policing is a local matter. And if we're going to rebuild the politics of the country, that has to happen at the local level, mm -hmm. not in the halls of the Capitol. So there are some national efforts, you know, the movement for black lives is, is supporting the, um, the breathe act that came from Ayanna Presley and, and other members of the squad that, that would be a great intervention at the federal level, you know, and there's a movement to, to stop these federal police task forces that come in and flood cities and make a bunch of gang arrests or immigration arrests or drug arrests or whatever, but the real action is on the ground. It's about lobbying city council members and going to budget hearings at the local level. Mm. And, and I think that's where we're going to shift the politics of the country away from this moderate corporate driven center to a real left wing people centered politics. Mm that actually cares about poor and working class people, that actually cares about the long-term trajectory of the environment, that actually cares about addressing deep historical racial injustices, um, which the moderate wing of the Democratic Party is not really that interested in. 